What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. This video is a review about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. And I'm gonna tell you everything I like and, and maybe not impressed and don't like about the device as well as you know, just going through the lineage of this device. And I guess let's just start with that and how I came to this because I've been covering these phones for a really, really long time since they've come out. You know, the Fold 1, I had a pre-order on it. I canceled it and then I did get the Fold 2, I did get the Fold 3 and now I have the Fold 4. I've even compared the Fold 3 to the Fold 4 and I'll be honest with you, there's not that much of a difference between the two devices when it comes down to it. Probably not enough to actually maybe warrant an upgrade. There are some differences. This is a better phone overall, but again, probably not so many differences as you may have wanted there to be. So I guess let's just dive right into this review and Z Fold 4 um, is more and it, and it seems like that's where we're going over the years now with Samsung and probably any phone manufacturer it's kind of incremental upgrades nothing uh, revolutionary more evolutionary and I've said that the last couple of years for a lot of devices and the Z Fold 4 I have to admit is more of an evolutionary device than a revolutionary device it's not really they didn't really change it to these points where it's like by god it's amazingly different than you know anything we've had in the past um, but yeah let's talk about it so first of all I think one of the bigger upgrades about it was the camera on there, they increased the megapixels. You have the 30X space zoom. Um, you can do up to 8K video. So let's talk about it. So, um, you know, taking photos, yeah, it's inconsistent. And I think that's to be said about a lot of Samsung phones. Can you get really, really great uh, photos on there? Yeah, you definitely can. Can you also take some bad photos um, or some photos that just aren't so spectacular or photos that just like, you know, I, I always say this, I take photos of my son or uh, a person or a, you know, a, a younger person that's kind of fidgety and kind of moves around and the photos just kind of look blurred. They have improved it, but the shutter lag is still kind of crappy on these Galaxy phones, especially the Galaxy Z Fold 4. So, you know, I would still much have rather take a photo with a Pixel phone when it's especially of people, which is most of the photos I take. Um, but, you know, you can still get some nice photos with this, don't get me wrong, they're just a little inconsistent at times. I love the 30X space zoom to zoom in on something and capture it such as a moonshot uh, or something far away if I really want to see what it is you can do that and you can also capture video at 30x as well so it's really really cool to capture that kind of um, information with the lens the camera underneath the display is mighty mighty disappointing um, it's just as disappointing as it was on the Z Fold 3 they still need to do some major work on that um, I wouldn't say remove it but it it's just very unimpressive still. Uh, it's not gonna be a camera you're gonna wanna take photos with unless you just are trying to capture something real quick. Um, the one on the front, again, it's good. It's not great. Can be inconsistent at times. Um, the video overall, I think it captures pretty good video uh, with this. I really don't have any issues when I'm capturing the video, have it be on the front here, or these back cameras. It's general pretty pretty good. The 8K is pretty damn crisp. Uh, the 4K is pretty damn crisp. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you know, is it my go-to 4K camera? Yeah, I could turn to it. Uh, it doesn't seem any, you know, it doesn't seem much worse or, or much better in any way. It kind of seems, you know, par for the course in with its rivals when I'm capturing 4K video. So again, I'm pretty happy with it. Charging speeds, they kept them the same. You're getting 25 watt and 15 watt for wireless. Um, it, it needs to be faster. They really need, it's still, it's fast enough to where you can call it fast charging. You know, you can basically charge it in about an hour or so, but it's not going to blow you away. It's not competing against its Chinese counterparts like Xiaomi and Huawei and Vivo and companies like that where you can charge a lot of phones in like, you know, 25 to 45 minutes, somewhere in that range. And this is still an hour, maybe a little over an hour to fully charge. I, they really need to increase those speeds. It's high time they've done it. We've been stuck at 25 watt wired charging for a long time. Um, and then 15 watt wireless charging is still way too slow. The comeback is, you know, with these faster charging speeds, if they give it to us, it's gonna decrease the life of the battery. I, a lot of people still upgrade or you have insurance plan or if the phone dies in a year 
you can get it replaced. I think that's a sad excuse to not do something like that. Uh, even if, it, if it's true or not true, or it doesn't affect people the same way or keeps the battery life at a certain speed, uh, a certain percentage, then whatever. But yeah, it's high time we get faster charging speeds overall. They still have the charging on the back of the display, uh, on the back of the, the phone to charge other devices. It's a cool feature to have. I personally never use it. It's not a blow away. Uh, feature for me, but it's cool to come to charge like a phone or a, a pair of buds or a watch on the back of there. The software, it's fairly the same as the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and Z Fold 3 experience. You do get the um, taskbar at the bottom that allows you to interact with the apps and multitask a little bit easier. So I would say the software is improved and has some more features uh, from the previous generation of the phone, but this software will be coming and already is in a lot of cases on those older phones now at this moment in time that I'm making the video. But it, it, did they massively improve the software and massively change it? No, they haven't. Uh, but they've gone, they're going in the right direction with making things easier, such as multitasking. You know, you have this app open and then I can have something from the taskbar or look at all my apps for that matter and, uh, you know, pick something out. So maybe I want uh, a little browsing window. I can drag it wherever I want. Really easily stuff. It's very intuitive intuitive and it just works great. So I would give the software a, a plus mark going up, but again, it's more evolutionary rather than level, revolutionary. It does have water resistance, no dust resistance. For me, it's completely fine not to have the dust resistance. I live a pretty simple life in terms of what I do. I'm in a house most of the time and when I'm not, the phone's in the pocket. It's not that dusty where I live, so I'm fine. Uh, if I had a really hard working job uh, where there was dust a lot, maybe I was a painter or um, I did a lot of construction, stuff like that. I'd be a little bit worried about, you know, things getting into the phone. Um, it would be nice to get the dust resistance, but uh, for me, not a game ender, uh, but it is something if you didn't have, you might be one to be wary of that. Speakers, uh, speakers, again, they're not really improved over the, the Fold 3. I still feel like the Fold 2 has the loudest, best speakers, um, but overall, pretty darn good speakers if you ask me for what you get. Uh, definitely nothing to be sad about. They are pretty good. I don't have it on me, but you do have the S Pen again on here and the case that you can get with Samsung and other manufacturers is potentially in a better location. You have it on um, the, the side uh, rather than, you know, stuck in, you know, to the, the back of the phone. So potentially is a little bit more comfortable. It's the same pretty much S experience as it has been on the last generation of the Z Fold 3 and Z Fold 4. So you're not gonna really notice anything different. There's no Bluetooth functionality built into that S Pen that's included with the phone. So you're not gonna be like, oh, wow, it's so different. It's not. But if you love having an S Pen and you really, uh, for you, it's important to do the, the writing of it, not the gestures and uh, uh, the, the photo capabilities that are able to do and the other functionality that you can do with it just by pressing a button. If you don't care about that stuff, and again, all you really care about is actually writing on the display, I think you'd be pretty happy. Holding it in your hand and the design, it is uh, wider and shorter, so fatter and shorter. If I just handed it to you, I think you'd be hard pressed especially if you've come from a Fold 2 or Fold 3, I honestly don't think you'd notice much of a difference. You probably wouldn't be like, whoa, that feels a lot different. I did that, it didn't feel like a difference, and then going back and forth between my Fold 3 and Fold 4 at times didn't feel like much of a difference. So just because it is shorter and fatter, it doesn't notice that much. The only real difference is that you'll notice bit, maybe a little bit more is on the outside display, which is, to me is still too small. Um, it is a little bit wider, meaning that the typing experience is a little bit better uh, on here. With that keyboard, it's a little bit easier to type, but ultimately it's still personally not big enough. I would still want it to be wider, uh, akin to what you get on uh, the Vivo X Fold. I think that's perfect. I love that the Vivo X Fold has this huge outside display and inside display and you can really feel it and seems like it. it seems like a huge phone now that's not going to be for everybody but ultimately at the end of the day the changes that they did with uh, the shorter and fatter experience of the display is not very noticeable um, weight wise it feels about the same as a z fold 3 not much difference on there. If you think it's, if you thought it was heavy before, you're gonna think it's heavy now. And if you're coming from a, a really kind of normal candy bar phone, such as maybe like a, a, like a smaller Pixel 6 or a smaller iPhone, you're gonna think this is quite heavy. I'm pretty used to it. 
so it doesn't really, and you probably will get used to it. Um, but again, if you're coming from a, a lighter phone, you're probably gonna think this is kind of, kind of heavy. The displays overall are pretty bright. They did add an extra brightness mode and it does help with outside viewing. I still would want this to be brighter as time goes on. If I, I wouldn't, it's not one of the things I would stop them from saying, like, don't make the screen brighter when I go outside. Um, I, it's still at times, if you're in a super bright environment, for me anyway, it's still a little bit hard to see. It's still not as bright as other displays on the market from Samsung um, and, and now Apple as well. So I'd really like to see them increase the brightness even more, but don't get me wrong, it's definitely bright. It's definitely better than a lot of other displays on the market in terms of its brightness. The quality of it is still really good for watching videos or looking at photos, no matter which display you're on. But uh, yeah, pretty good with the brightness and, and the quality of the display. Battery life, I personally get a little bit better battery life on this phone than I did with the Z Fold 3. I personally get about five hours of screen on time. I know other people, because I see screenshots of it all the time, are getting eight, nine, maybe 10 hours almost of screen on time. I don't personally, so the battery does not blow me away. But you might personally get some amazing battery life Definitely probably better than you did on the Z Fold 3, so keep that in mind, but it's gonna it's gonna be different for everybody. So again, keep that in mind, but I guess I'll give the battery life uh, thumb up because again, I'm seeing other people getting amazing battery life with this phone, better than even like a Galaxy S22 Ultra. Performance is pretty freaking good. I, there's not really any hiccups or anything like that, so playing games, um, using social media apps, going in between apps, all that stuff is gonna be great. You got 12 gigs of RAM in here. You got a lot of storage, either 256 or up to a terabyte of storage. Um, it's got the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor. So all that stuff is fine and dandy. I personally have no issues with performance. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't feel like the smoothest phone in the world. Pixel 6 Pro still feels smoother to me on a day-to-day -day basis. iPhone still has better animations, but ultimately, it still feels pretty fast and it does not really any hiccups or stuttering or anything like that. So my conclusion is if you've never had a Samsung Galaxy Fold before and you're thinking about buying which one, get the Fold 4. It is the best experience that they offer on a folding phone. And if you live in America, it really is the best folding phone to get. It's really one of the only folding phones at, that, at this point to get for that matter. Um, internationally, in China, you might want to go a different route, but still, I think the software experience is really tailor-made for what Samsung does uh, between, you know, flex mode um, that basically breaks up the screen for you, showing photos on one side, for instance, and then taking photos on the other, and then the multitasking that they have built into this to run multiple windows really easily and comfortably. Um, and just the other software tweaks they have for customization and changing the phone to the way that you want. There's a lot to like about this. There's really, when you break it down, there's not a lot not to like about the phone. But again, if you're coming from an, a former Galaxy Fold phone, especially the two or the three, I don't think it's gonna be a big, big, huge jump for you where you're gonna be blown away. You might notice some improvements that you are impressed by it, but not enough to be blown away by. But it is a great phone. Very, I'm still very happy with it for the most part. Um, but if they come out with a Pixel Fold, they still might switch over to that Pixel Fold, which is due to potentially come out in March or April of 2023. Um, but still, it's still the phone I use on a regular basis. It will be the phone I use on a regular basis unless another folding phone comes into play. And uh, like I always say to everybody, no matter what phone you have, um, if it's, as long as it's a candy bar phone, if you're thinking about getting this phone, do it. You can always return it back to Samsung, get your money back and not have to pay anything if you buy it directly through Samsung. If you wanna buy it, it's linked down below. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.